coffee. It is delicious, smells great, inexpensive and a great tool to stay awake. I was ordering a delicious hot cup of coffee when a curious thought penetrated my skull. What exactly is coffee? First of all, what is coffee? The word coffee derives from the Arabic kahwa, which some sources say it is a marriage of the word kuwa, meaning power and energy, and kafta, from the cut plant. After the Ottoman Turks conquered Yemen, it turned into kahve, and later the Dutch stole it, becoming coffee. It was this adaptation of the word that is now the English version, coffee. So, what's the lore? As the legend goes, Kaldi, a 9th century Ethiopian goat herder, discovered it when his goat suddenly felt like they had drank four cans of Red Bull after eating the berries of a mysterious plant. It was a coffee plant. But later this story was credited as apocryphal by the Roman Church. This basically means that it isn't canon in the eyes of God. Another legend credits Sheikh Omar as the finder of this magical plant. After being exiled from Mocha, a starving Omar found some tasty looking berries. He attempted to chew on them, but they were too hard. He then thought of boiling the berries to soften them up, which gave the water this dirty looking color. Dehydrated, hungry, desperate. Omar drank the suspiciously colored beverage. It was like a gift from God. This potion, it revitalized and sustained him for longer. As you can see, there are a few different origin stories as to when and where coffee first appeared. But using modern genetic tools, scientists were able to pinpoint the exact region of origin to southwestern Ethiopia. It was first planted by the Gala warriors of the region and later brought into Yemeni port cities by Somali merchants. Here it was cultivated and grew strong, becoming a new addition to Arabic culture and day-to-day -day lives. It was later used by the Sufi to better concentrate during nocturnal religious rituals, but also because of coffee's intoxicating feeling which was similar to the ones they were trying to ignite through chanting. In the 16th century, coffee had made its way not only to all of the Middle East and North Africa, but also India. It was brought there by a Sufi called Baba Budan, who smuggled seven raw coffee beans hidden in his beard. Back in those days, coffee beans were roasted and baked in order to sterilize them, making them infertile. This was done so people could only buy from the Yemeni. The Dutch East India Company was the first to import at a large scale coffee into Europe, becoming widely accepted after Pope Clement VIII drank it for the first time, declaring, and I quote, This Satan's drink is so delicious that it would be a pity to let the infidels have exclusive use of it. Yeah, nice one, Vatican. In 1727, it was introduced in Brazil, but mass cultivation only happened after their independence from the Portuguese hands in 1822. Brazil went from having no coffee exports, to being a significant regional producer, to being the world's largest exporter by 1852. Nowadays, it is the biggest player in the market. There are many potential beneficial compounds in coffee, People think of caffeine, but it's likely that some of the most beneficial compounds are not the caffeine. Coffee has a very complex chemical profile, containing more than 1,000 different chemicals, including carbohydrates, lipids, nitrogenous compounds, vitamins, minerals, alkaloids, phenolic compounds, and of course, the MVP, caffeine. Caffeine acts as a central nervous system stimulant, and when it reaches your brain, the most noticeable effect is alertness. You feel more awake and less tired. This is because your body releases a molecule called adenosine, which is basically the sleepy hormone. 
What caffeine does is block these molecules' receptors in the brain, making you not feel sleepy. Simple, right? Other studies also found that people who drink coffee regularly have lower risks of catching diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, type 2, type 2 diabetes and liver disease. Another study that analyzed data from half a million people over a span of a decade showed that people who drink coffee, decaf or caffeinated, have a 14% lower risk of cardiovascular diseases. Really good. The results suggest that mild to moderate intake of ground, instant and decaffeinated coffee should be considered part of a healthy lifestyle. Some people consider coffee to be a health drink, at least the Arabs did, and like everything, if you have too much, there will be consequences. Some side effects of coffee can be having trouble falling asleep, shakiness, or faster heart rate, even arrhythmias sometimes. Although this is much more present in people with pre-existing heart conditions. Another really common side effect is a restless stomach, which basically means I gotta go take a shit. Ah, much better. So if you're feeling way too many of these side effects, maybe it's time to quit coffee. Just be careful with caffeine withdrawal since it is a drug. Withdrawal symptoms are most notably headaches. That's because the blood vessels in your brain become used to always having caffeine. If you cut that caffeine, it may likely cause headaches. Other symptoms are drowsiness, irritability and anxiety. In some people, it may even cause tremors in the muscle fibers. Just remember that caffeine is a drug, so it must never be consumed too much. Although it is not like smoking crack or drinking vodka straight from the bottle, its side effects when consumed in high amounts are still very noticeable. Sometimes, although extremely rare, it is possible to overdose on caffeine. So if you're on your 13th coffee of the day and you start getting hallucinations or vomits or confusion, yeah, maybe it's time to switch to green tea. As you consume the same amount of caffeine on a daily basis, your body develops tolerance to it. Other factors like your age, body mass and overall health can determine your tolerance to caffeine too. So if you want to decrease the amount of caffeine that you take, it's best to do it slowly. It's safe for most healthy adults to consume up to 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, which for my American friends is around four eight ounce cups of coffee whatever that means. And for my European family, it's around six espressos. The keyword here is up to. So this is the upper limit and maybe you should never really be getting close to it on a daily basis, but you know, you do you. To recap, coffee is a great beverage for day-to-day -day lives, allowing us to stay awake for longer and more alert and more productive overall. But even with all of its health benefits, it is still a drug and you should always listen to your body, how it responds and how you feel after drinking it. Also, do your own research, like don't just trust me or other YouTube videos or TikTok reels, whatever, do your own research. But overall, if you feel like you work much better while drinking coffee, if you're more productive and you feel better. Just freaking do it, bruv. Anyway, I hope you learned something new. Stay safe, stay creative, and I'll see you next time.